Hey guys, welcome to Fulton Street Beats. It's good to see you here again. If you could take a quick second and just hit that like button below. Let's me know that you like the content that's coming out and it really helps the YouTube algorithm so I can bring you even better content in the future. Now today we're going to talk about something that doesn't quite add up. People who order chibs and guitars and they arrive with either snapped headstocks, broken necks, or really catastrophic damage. Now the internet explanation is usually always the same. Customs must have broke it, taped the box back up, and mailed it away to you. Today I'm going to explain why that's not certainly true. And what actually makes sense from a logistics standpoint and a business standpoint. This is structural logic. So let's get into this. U.S. Customs doesn't smash guitars. They don't break items quietly and ship them to you afterwards. If they believe something's counterfeit, they seize it. You're going to get paperwork, you're going to get a case number, and you don't get a broken guitar. Now, that's not opinion. That's federal procedure. They either release the item or it never arrives. Now, I want you to think about this claim logically. Exactly why would a federal agency break your guitar? First, they'd be destroying private property. Yes, private property, because if they shipped it to you, it's private property. Then they'd be covering their own tracks and handing the evidence to you, the civilians. Now, does that make sense? They're going to commit a crime and hand you the evidence. Now, that doesn't align with the chain of custody requirements or legal liability, now, does it? There's no incentive for customs to behave that way. There's no procedure that supports it, and no risk model supports it. I'm going to repeat that. No risk model would support that. They would never risk it. Here's where the real forensic question comes in. True carrier damage creates visible trauma. What do I mean by that? Well, you're going to have a... If you have a guitar that's broken in a box, you should have a crushed carton corners. You should have compression waves. You should have tears, punctures, maybe forklift intrusion points. But what we keep seeing is a clean, pristine box with a violently broken neck or headstock. Now, from a mechanic standpoint, that's contradictory. High energy internal shear breaks do not usually occur without external packaging deformation. That's not, a, that's not a conspiracy theory. That's a force of transmission. Now, there's another myth I have to kill right here before we get going. And a lot of people still believe that these guitars are junk, wood, and weak. That's false. I've personally tested many of them. I left one outside in the freezing snow conditions for 11 days straight. Then I brought it inside, and I exposed it to extreme heat, around 400 degrees Fahrenheit for over an hour. Then I plugged it in. Guess what? No cracks, no shrinking, no structural failure. Even the electronics worked, and it was close to in tune. Meaning, the cheap wood myth just exploded. It's not supported. Now, Here's where we move into plausible logistics theory. I'm going to word this very carefully, and I'm not accusing anyone of anything. I'm explaining why certain business models make certain behaviors possible. In low-cost, high-environment international sales, some sellers operate on very tight margins. If an instrument gets damaged before shipping, the seller has two choices. Number one, he's going to absorb the loss and destroy the guitar, which would be the right thing to do. Number two is the attempt to recover the loss through shipping insurance. In some shady business environments, there can be an economic incentive to classify pre-existing damage as in-transit damage. That doesn't mean it happens. It means the incentive structure exists. Now, let's add another layer. Most buyers of ultra-cheap guitars won't ship a damaged one back. The return shipping often costs more than the guitar. So you have a theoretical model where the seller files a claim and the buyer keeps the guitar and nobody demands a return. That's logistically plausible scenario. Not proven, but plausible. And it explains the clean box, broken guitar contradiction better than the idea of federal agents snapping guitars in secret. There's still one more myth to kill. Some people think that Gibson works with customs to destroy knockoffs. 
From a legal and operational standpoint, that makes no sense. Companies don't command federal agencies. They can file intellectual property complaints, and that's real, but they don't get to tell customs to smash private property. If something like that existed, it wouldn't be a rumor. There would be indictments, congressional hearings, and federal lawsuits. The theory dies under the basic risk analysis. Now let's close with facts. Customs doesn't smash guitars and mail them. Federal agencies don't secretly damage property. The guitars are not fragile trash. What does exist is me mechanical contradiction. Pristine boxes, violently broken instruments. There's only a few models that explain that. I'm not making accusations. I'm simply following physics and logistics. If this happened to you, document everything. And if you want more real-world investigations like this, subscribe to Fulton Street Beats. No myths, no fluff, just analysis. And let me know in the comment section below if this happened to you and did the seller ask you for pictures of the guitar to file a shipping claim. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.